Hello, welcome to the Gilshrat channel. I'm JB, and today in my video, I am going to be showing you how to install DCC into an EMU or electric multi unit train. So, I'm going to be showing you how to install that into this Shinkan Sen uh, Zero Series train. So, we'll be installing a decoder in the end cars. So, this one and this one will each get a decoder. And then I'll also be installing a decoder into the power car, which has the motor. Alright, so as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, uh, model trains in Japan, especially EMU units, have uh, a powered unit in the center, and they usually have end cars that have a light board set up in them. So they kind of look something like this. So in order to convert this to DCC, I'm going to have to put three decoders in here, one on each end car to control the light boards, and one in the center to control the motor. And then uh, when I go to program these decoders, I'll have to synchronize them so that they're all under the same address. All right, so I'm going to be using this decoder here. This is the DZ126. And I've also been using the DZ126T, which is a little bit smaller. Uh, but this decoder will fit inside this train and will be good for this particular installation. Alright, so before we get into taking the train apart and doing the decoder install, I do want to kind of explain what we're going to have to do as far as installing decoders into the light boards in the end cars. So first I want to go over the two types of light boards that I have discovered uh, as I've been working on these trains. So the first one, which you see here, is a directional LED light board. So in this case, the light will change colors depending on what direction the electricity is flowing through it. So for instance, in this case, when it's going forward, the electricity will flow in such a way that the LED lights up as a white LED, and then that makes the headlights come on in the train. When you reverse the train, the polarity of the electricity will switch, and the LED will now light up as red. Uh, these type of LED light boards are very common, at least in my experience, on the Shinkansen trains because they use the exact same headlight for both the reverse and the forward headlight. So it's the same uh, light spot on the train, lack of better terms. Another type that I have found is these LED boards that have two LEDs on them. And these LEDs are connected to a diode. And a diode is basically kind of like a resistor that lets electricity only flow in one direction. So how these work is each light, so like for instance the top one here, uh, is set next to a optic filter. So it's like a little piece of plastic that takes light from the LED up to the actual shell of the locomotive to simulate where the lights would be. So in this case the front one connects to the headlights and hence it glows white and the bottom one is connected to a red filter which would glow red and be the end lights or the reverse lights. So both the LEDs are the same color, it's the filter that changes it. So how this works is when the train's going forward the front LED will light up and the white filter will be lit up and the train's headlights will come on. When the train goes in reverse the polarity changes and only the back LED comes on and the red filter comes on and the reverse lights or the back lights come on on the train. Uh, there's also a similar type of LED board that only has one LED on it but it still uses the diode function and I found those on steam locomotives uh, and it uses that for the directional lighting so like when it's reversed the reverse headlamp on the tender comes on and when it's going forward the headlight comes on. Uh, in that case there's only one LED because the LED just shuts off there are no reverse lights. So the problem is with DCC, the way the coders are set up is they're designed for the directional lighting to either be an on and off function. You know, you have three wires. One wire goes to the front light, one goes to the reverse, and then you have a common that they both use for the ground. And so when the train's going forward, it lights up the headlight, and when it goes backwards, it lights up the tail light. And the circuitry's different. Now you can't really do that with these directional light boards because they rely on polarity. So some people will take this light board out, they'll completely dismantle it and put in standard um, DCC function, just have the wires connect directly to the LED. I decided to do another workaround because my 
uh, electronic skills aren't as good. So my workaround, it's worked for me so far. I'm not going to guarantee it works for other people, so please, you know, do it at your own risk. But what I decided to do was I actually connected my decoders using the motor circuitry. And then I'll do some programming so that those that motor circuitry is either on or off. It doesn't uh, variate the voltage like it would if it was actually running the motor. And then by doing that, I can then reverse the polarity and use the light board as is. So when I install the decoders into the light cars, you're going to see I'm actually going to be connecting the motor circuitry or the motor wires into the, um, the light boards, not the actual light circuitry. Now, there is one slight downside to this. Uh, obviously, the train will function normally, like if it was, you know, on a, a regular DC layout where when you go forward, the forward lights come on, the tail lights come on, and vice versa. But unlike with DCC operation, when the train is sitting still, there will be no lights. So this workaround isn't perfect. Um, but my thinking is if I can maintain the functionality of the train as it is on DC, then I'm okay with my DCC conversion. So I'm just going to carefully pop this light board out. And it just slides out of this little plastic. I uh, had to work it a little bit, but I just slid this piece forward and it popped out. So that's what we got to do. So now... Remember this is going to be the front, which right now this is backwards for me. So let's see, this is right, this is left. So the decoder will be installed as such. So I will have red wire on the right and black wire on the left. So these will get installed like this. I'm going to trim this wire quite a bit because I'm going to try to hide it all up in the front part so that it's hidden down inside or underneath the crew cab area. So the decoder and everything will be hidden inside of here. So you won't be able to see it when you look through the windows. So that should hopefully make it look nicer. At least that's the plan. And then of course we have the orange and the gray wire and these will go to the light board. So the actual light wires, we will not need. So I am just gonna snip these off. All right, at this point, I have taken the decoder and I have trimmed the wires and stripped them. And the next step will be to solder the orange and the gray wire onto the light board like this so to do this correctly I'm going to keep it set up from my angle and the orange goes on the right and the gray wire will go on the left so kinda like what I have here so I'm going to do it at an angle and before I solder these I am going to go ahead and tin these wires just so I can get a nice clean solder. This is just a regular solder joint so I'm just going to use regular solder and I'm actually just going to use the solder that's already there to uh, hook that up to this light board. Alright, so that's that is now soldered. So that's good. And I'm just going to put a piece of uh, captain tape on here so I don't have to deal with taking these off. So now the next part, this is the challenging part because I want to, something like this, I'm gonna to want to solder these wires here. But, like I said, the solder does not like sticking to this. So I'm gonna to have to use this special steel solder. Also, I wanna be very careful to Try not to heat this as little as possible. I don't want to melt the base of the train car. And I accidentally did that earlier and I had to find a replacement end car. So don't want to do that again. Right, unfortunately my camera cut off uh, while I was in the middle of soldering. Um, but you can see here that I have completed the solder. Uh, not the best solder job. There's some big clumps here. But like I said it's very difficult 
to get this solder to stick to this weight for some reason. And uh, I did check, this was also in the clip that got cut off. Uh, I took this truck off and verified that I did not melt the bottom of the, uh, the shell here, or the base, whatever you want to call it. So this is all connected. So now I am going to go ahead and put some captain tape to insulate. So this is captain tape here. And this is a, uh, it's actually, a lot of people think this is a lot better to use than electric tape. I know in the earlier installations uh, I was using electric tape. Uh, but this stuff's a lot thinner. Um, it has good heat resistance. And uh, so a lot of electronics actually use this over electric tape. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use here. That's better to over insulate and then under insulate. That is my philosophy when it comes to this. Plus this tape is so thin that two layers is not going to take up that much space. Alright, we'll go ahead slide that in position. And then the next thing I found, and unfortunately to get this to fit up inside of the decoder, I have to cut this little extender off, which I think was designed to just kind of hold the shell in place. It's not necessary. No, there's a bit of a chain. There it goes. I flew across the room. So this will now all get you know, shoved together like that and go up inside of the shell. So let's go ahead and put the shell on. But yeah, I have the shell back on. I just carefully fitted it back on, made sure the decoder slid up underneath the, uh, the cab there. So this is now all put together. So the next thing I need to do now is go ahead and test and make sure that the decoder was installed properly. Now I am not going to set this on a power track right away. Uh, there are two reasons. One, uh, if I did not install the decoder properly I will burn it out likely. And I don't want to do that. I've already had to send one decoder back to Digitrax. And two, uh, because I'm using the motor uh, circuitry to run the lights, uh, I need to actually adjust the max voltage before I run any power through there, or I could also burn out the LED on the lights. So I'm actually just going to use my programmer that I built and connect this to my computer and actually try to program it. And if I can't program it, then that's a sign that I did not install it properly. If it programs correctly, then I know it was most likely installed correctly. So to do this, I gotta run my power pickups. And you wanna, I wanna make sure I wire this properly so red is always on right. So there's these, you can kind of see, there's this arrow, and this arrow is telling you that that's the front. So it's going to sit like this on the track, that's the front. So red's going to go on this side, which is right, and then this will be left. And then to make sure the motor's matching, um, red and orange go together, black and gray go together. So I want to make sure I wire that properly. And then there's also on here, there's an arrow here, so this goes this way. So, what I want to do is run my orange and yeah. So I'm just going to run these wires through here. Alright, so the wires are coming in. So that's good. And uh, see, that's the front. So I want orange. So I actually want to twist this so that orange is coming in on this side. All right. So we got that. And I kind of want my decoder to be hidden a little bit in the side here. There's a on the car body. You can see there's a little bit of an area in the entryway. Uh, right here, so that I'm going to try to hide the decoder up in that a little bit. You're going to see some of the wires, but it's just kind of how it's going to be. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack, and I'm going to restrip these wires. Now, one of the problems 
that I was having was in the original, my original conversion, and I did this for the other one, which was very similar design. Uh, you can see uh, there's actually a hole right here. And I originally had the wires come here because I wanted it closer to where I was going to hide the decoder. But this meant that the wires had to run through here, and they were basically jamming up in here. Now there's a little, like, trench, which I thought the wires would be fine to fit in, but for some reason I kept having problems with that. So what I'm going to do now is I actually have this hole is coming in right on top between these two springs. So when I solder these, I'm going to have to be very careful, but I'm going to try to solder it so the wire comes off like this to the center and then it goes up to the top. And then, now there will be a little bit of an issue because this sits there. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to actually put this down first then insert the springs. So I'm going to take solder, put a little bit of flux on this so that the, it's nice and clean. Have that sitting there. And the goal here is to keep the solder as much off of the spring as possible. Alright. So let's see how that came out. Alright, that looks pretty good. And we still got the springiness, so that's good. So let's do the other one. Is there a moment of truth? So I don't I want to make sure that this insulator stays in place because that is important. This insulator does a very important function on this. So we'll keep that where it's supposed to be. And then also there's supposed to be a rubber piece that goes here. And this uh, just helps insulate everything from these little strips on here. So now I'm going to pull these wires back through. Yeah, a little bit tight. I'm going to carefully try to line these up and use a screwdriver to push them into place. Alright, so that's now in place. Now I want to make sure that everything else is where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to make sure my little insulation pad here is stretched out over where it's supposed to go. It is not getting stuck down in the gear. And then we're going to snap this onto the shell. Let's hope that this time it actually works. There's a little bit of a bump there, but that's that's normal. Then we got the, oops, there we go. And then we got to put the bottom piece up. Snap in the place. That snapped in the place. Okay. So I actually want to before I solder these onto here. I want to test this. solder goes a long, long way when it comes to these things. Alright. 
So that's now soldered. Alright, so off camera I did a little bit more playing around and I think what was going on was that the springs weren't setting properly when I closed up the shell and, um, or not the shell, but I guess the, the seat platform, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so what was going on was I don't think the springs were touching the motor. Um, but now, you see it is working. It seems to be working. No uh, gears seizing up. Nice clean movement. Let's go the other direction. Yep. Yep, nice clean movement on there. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and program this train so I can use it. And you see I have the end cars here. And I have my powered motor car here. Everything has a decoder in it. So, the way this train is built, and both of my Shinkansen's are like this, is the couplers are designed so that the cars can only connect in one direction. So if you look carefully at these couplers, you can see that I can only connect like that. Okay? I cannot connect it like this. Alright, they're slightly different. So this is actually really good because it means that I can always have this set in a specific direction and the end cars will always be lined up in that particular direction. So if I make this forward, I can have this car always be going in reverse and this car always going forward. So that when I reverse direction, now this is going reverse, this is going reverse, and this is now going forward and so that it'll have the white uh, front lights, headlights come on instead of the red end lights. So that's actually really good to know. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start by programming the motor car first. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that on my program track and I'm using the Digitrax PR4 so I have this connected to my computer and I'm using JMRI. So I'm here in JMRI and I'm going to go ahead and add a new locomotive to the roster. And I'm going to tell it to read from decoder. Alright, and it found a bunch of Digitrax ones. We're using the DZ126. So that would be this one here. Alright, now we'll tell it the address we want to use. Uh, since these trains themselves don't have road numbers on them, although I do think there's some detailed parts where I can add it, I'm just going to go with the locomotive uh, train set type. So that's the 2000 series. Yeah, so if you know anything about DCC programming, if you're going to use four digit addressing, you need to use the long digit address because it's going to have to use two bytes. So, right. All right, now we're going to open the comprehensive programmer. That's all in there. And then as far as uh, what I really need to do with the program car, I think I'm pretty much set. Basic speed control. All right, so this here, we're going to leave this the same here. Uh, but in the end cars, we're actually going to have to mess around with the speed control. All right, so I just programmed this. So now I've got my track set to the DCC system, the indicator light is on, and I'm going to test to make sure that this program correctly. Alright, and it seems to be working, so that's all good. Alright, so let's put the front car on the program track. Set this here. Let's add the end car into the roster, the front one. I'm going to attempt to read. Sometimes it doesn't like reading these end cars. No, I did not like that. Okay, so I'll have to manually figure this out. I know it's a Digitrax decoder. Alright, so it's this one here. 
So we'll say open comprehensive programmer. So, all right. So let's go to basic. Tell it to do long address. I'll tell it to do 2000 as before. And let's tell it to write changes on the sheet. All right, it claims it did it. All right, next, and this is very important, go to the basic speed control here. And this is the important part that we have to adjust so we don't burn out the LED. All right, so yes, you're gonna tell it to use V-start, and then start voltage, mid voltage, and max. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set everything to two. So uh, if you set it to zero or one, that actually makes it max. The way the programming is set up, uh, those are both actually max voltage. So I'm gonna set it to the lowest setting that you can, and I'm gonna set it at two. And I'm gonna set the max, mid, and start all at two. And I'm gonna tell it to write the changes on the sheet. I have this car programmed, so let's go ahead and test it. So I've got it set local on 2000. I have it set to forward. Give it some power. The light should come on. The clear light. Yes, it does. Good. And we're going to put it in reverse and give it some juice. And the red light should come on, and it does. All right. So this car works. All right. So you can see here that I've made the entry for the rear end car. Uh, I've got all this information here. Uh, I went into basic, I've set the address to 2000, made sure it was long address. I went ahead and wrote that to the decoder. And then for basic uh, speed control, I have set everything to two. I've written that to the decoder and I just tested it and it does seem to be working properly uh, for going in the forward direction. So when it's going forward with the nose front, it is clear the lights are clear and then when it's going backwards it has red lights but this is the end car so i need to actually reverse that so i'm going to go back to I believe basic and yep so right here where it says normal direction of travel i'm actually going to tell it to go reverse so this is actually going to change the value of cv29 uh, and if you're interested in knowing more about that, there's a lot of information on the internet and I'll, uh, I will put a link in the description here that explains CV29. Um, but basically CV29 works a little bit differently because depending on the value entered in the CV29, uh, different operations and functions will happen in the decoder. So this program automatically programs everything for you so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to tell it to write changes on the sheet. All right, so I have the end car on the tracks. This is the one that when, when the motor and everything else is set to go forward, this will be going in reverse. And I have it set for direction of travel to be in reverse. So now, when I go forward, give the power, the red light should come on, and it does. And then when I tell it to go in reverse, the white or clear light should come on, and it does. All right, so this car is now properly programmed. I have the whole thing on the test track. I've dimmed the lights, so you can see how the lights are now coordinated. So I'm gonna have it go forward. It'll just creep up a little bit, but you'll get to see how the lights come on. All right, so I've just gone to speed step one, not even enough for the motor to kick in. But you can see that at the rear of the car, or the rear of the train, the lights are red, and at the front they are clear. And then if I switch direction, it should be the opposite. Yeah, so now they flipped. So the front lights are now clear and the rear light is now red. So that's exactly what we want. So now I will go ahead and put this on the layout and let you see how it runs. Alright, so I now have it on the layout. You can see it's running. It's got the directional lights working properly. Alright, let's slow her down. And we'll have it 
it reverse. These are running quite well. So that is how you install DCC into an EMU. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and were able to learn some useful information. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video or are interested in Japanese trains or trains in general, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. You can also check out my website at gilshret.info. Additionally, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash gilshrat and twitter at twitter.com forward slash gilshrat channel and once again thanks for watching